Muck and Dizzy and Rolly too. Lofty and Wendy join the crew. Bob and the gang have so much fun. Working together, they get the job done. Bob the Builder, can we fix it? Bob the Builder, yes we can. Milchard and Bird, Travis and Spud, playing together like good friends should. Bob the Builder, can we fix it? Bob the Builder, yes we can. Hello, Bob the Builder here. Do you know what I'm standing in front of? It's got walls and a roof, windows and a front door. It's a house. Today, we're going on site to learn how they're built. Hello, Bob. Oh, hello, everyone. Hi, Rolly. Hello, everyone else, too. It's my friend Bird and all his friends, too. They want to find out about houses, Bob, because houses are like nests. You go to sleep in them at night <coughs> and sit in them to look after your eggs in the daytime. I suppose houses are a bit like nests. And to find out how to build a house, let's go on site. Rock and roll! This is my computer. I'm going to show you some films on it. They'll tell us everything we need to know. Ready, everyone? <coughs> First, you need a plan. This is a little film of me making plans. Every time I build something, I make a plan first. Sometimes I put the plan up on this special display board so everyone can see it. Sometimes I draw my plan on a sheet of paper. And sometimes I look up plans in this special book. It tells me everything I need to know about what I'm going to build. Here's a plan of a house. And here's a plan of the Sunflower Factory I built in Sunflower Valley. Even though I've built lots of buildings, whenever I build something new, I always make a plan. That way, I can always see exactly how everything is put together. You have to draw plans very carefully so everyone can see where everything goes. Here I am, drawing. I'm trying to make everything really, really clear. I'm not drawing a plan, though. I'm drawing a picture of mountains and a valley. What do you think? Here's Wendy drawing a plan. It's a plan of a house. It's really clear, isn't it? Can you see what I'm doing? I'm building a model. A model is a special plan that's extra clear. It's not just a drawing. It shows you exactly where everything is going to go. This is a model of the whole of Sunflower Valley. Now let's go on site to see a plan for building a house. Here's a plan of a house. The man who drew it is called an architect and he's pointing to where everything is. You can see the house from above in this drawing. It's like being a bird in the sky looking down on it. This is the house, this is the kitchen, this is the living room and this is the bathroom. It's all set out in the plan. In this drawing, you can see the front of the house. You can see the walls and the roof and the doors and windows. It's all carefully drawn out in the plan. Now let's see how the plan's used on site. These builders are building a house. One of them has a plan in his hand. Can you see? Here they are looking at the plan to see where everything should go. They're looking at it very carefully to make sure they've got everything right. This builder's using the plan too. He's taking it with him while he works on the roof. That way, he can check it whenever he needs to. So if you want to build a house, you need a plan. It shows you how everything fits together. So we found out about plans. Now let's look at how houses are built. There are three stages to building a house. Stage one, foundations. Stage two, Walls. Stage three, roof. Can we build it? Yes, yes we, we can. can! Right then, let's get started. Vroom, vroom. Oh, hello, little truck. Do you want to help too? Vroom, 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 vroom. I'm sure I'll think of something for you to do. Vroom, 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 vroom. Okay, 
It's time for stage one, foundations. To make foundations, you dig a big hole in the ground and fill it with concrete. Here's Scoop and Muck digging the big hole now. Foundations have to be really strong to hold the house up. Thanks, you two. Next, we need lots of concrete to fill it in. Hello, Tumbler. Oh, hello again, little truck. Have I thought of something for you to do? Well, you could fetch more cement for Tumbler to make concrete with. <laughs> that was quick. Thanks, Tumbler. Thanks, little truck. Once the concrete's in the hole, it takes a whole week to dry. But then it's really hard, strong enough to hold up a house. It's time for stage two, walls. To build the walls, first you need a frame. The frame is made of big wooden beams. They're put together to make the shape of the house. Thanks, Lofty. Once the frame is finished, we put panels of wood around it to make the walls. Hello again, little truck. Looking for something else to do? Vroom, 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 vroom. You could fetch more wood. Vroom, 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 vroom. Thanks, little truck. Now the wooden walls are finished, we cover them with concrete to make them strong and hard. Thanks, Tumbler. So that's stage two done. Walls. Now it's time for stage three. The roof. The roof is made from wooden beams too. Thanks, Lofty. Vroom, 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 vroom. Little truck. Well, this time, I really have got a job for you. The roof isn't finished yet. There are still gaps between the beams. We need some tiles to cover them up. Will you collect them for us? Vroom, vroom. Vroom. Ooh, you are quick, little truck. Tiles go on the roof to keep the rain and weather out. And that's the roof finished. We've done all three stages. Foundations, walls, roof. You know what, little truck? Vroom, vroom. There might be just one more thing this house needs. Vroom, vroom. Yes, a garage for you, little truck. Vroom, vroom. Yes, thanks for all your help. So now we know the three stages of building a house. Of course, there is one other thing you need before you can even start. What's that, Bob? A good, clear sight, Rolly. And for that you need... Demolition. Sometimes, when there's a building that nobody needs anymore, you have to knock it down. When you do that, it's called demolition. Buildings are very strong, so you need special equipment to knock them down, like Lofty's claw. It's hard work demolishing brick walls. They're held together by cement, so they need to be pulled apart. Here I am, demolishing the wall of a house. First of all, I took off the wallpaper. Then it was time to knock through those bricks. I needed a big hammer to help me do it. When we've knocked bricks down, we always try and store them somewhere safe, because we might want to use them again one day to be part of another building. So that's demolishing. We knock down one building that no one wants so that we can build another one that's much better. I think we should go on site again and find out more about demolition. This digger is going to do some demolition now. It's demolishing an old house that no one lives in anymore, so a new one can be built where it used to be. Knocking down a house is heavy work. You need a big, powerful machine like a digger to do it. There's the driver. He's controlling the digger, so it knocks down the house safely. You can't do it all at once. You have to do it a little bit at a time. There goes one wall. And there goes a bit of the roof. That builder's spraying water onto the old house to keep the dust down. When you demolish a house, you make a lot of dust. And there's the last bit of the house about to be demolished. There it goes. There, all done. I think we should have another look at that, don't you?
Now the site's clear, it's time for stage one. Foundations! Here's a little film of some of my machines. What sort of machines do we need for building foundations? We need to dig big holes, don't we? So which of my machines is good at digging? Scoop! He's very good at digging. He's got a big scoop at the front and a little one behind. That's called a backhoe digger. Scoop does all sorts of digging jobs for me. Once, he even dug out the side of a whole hill. He piled the earth up really carefully. Scoop's a very strong, careful digger. And which machine is this? He's got a really big digger. It's Muck. Muck's good at digging up lots and lots of earth really quickly. He often works with Scoop. When there's a really big digging job that has to be finished quickly, Scoop and Muck work together and the job gets done. Here's another machine I need to build foundations. Can you remember what happens after we've dug the big holes? Right, we pour in concrete. And this machine's really good at concrete pouring. Do you know who it is? It's Tumbler. Just look at all that concrete. And who's this? It's Dizzy, my cement mixer. Let's go back on site and look at some more machines. Here we are on site. And here's a really big digger. Look, it can reach all the way down into that deep hole. There's the driver. This digger is very strong, so the driver has to make sure it digs in exactly the right place. All the earth should go in the right place too, into that truck, ready to be driven away. This digger really is very big. Look at all the earth it can carry in its shovel. This digger is much smaller, but it's very useful too for digging smaller holes. That's why it's got a smaller shovel. That bit of digging's finished, so off it goes to dig somewhere else. Here's another machine. It's a concrete pouring truck, like Tumbler. It pours concrete into this long pipe. The concrete goes along the pipe and pours out where the builders want it to. There goes the concrete, right where it's needed. Those are the machines we need. Now we can see the foundations being built. Let's go on site. Here are the foundations all finished. They're very big, aren't they? Let's see how they were built. First of all, a digger digs holes in the earth. It digs long, deep, narrow holes called trenches. There it goes, digging all the earth out of that trench. Here's the driver. He's in charge of the digger. Can you see what he's doing? He's using these special levers to tell the digger what to do. So the digger digs the trenches in exactly the right place. The trench is finished now, so this digger can drive off to another site to dig somewhere else. And here comes the concrete pourer, full of concrete. It backs up into the right place. And one of the builders fixes on a special pouring attachment. The builders are getting ready to pour the concrete. That's where the concrete's going to come out. It goes all the way along this special chute. And there it is, pouring out. This builder is making sure it goes in the right place. There it goes, into the chute again. And out into the trenches and all around them. The builders move the special pouring attachment around to make sure the concrete spreads out everywhere. 
Then it's time to flatten the concrete out using this long piece of wood. Just look at all that concrete. There's lots of it. It's important that the concrete's really flat and level, so the builders use all sorts of tools to flatten it. Remember, when the concrete dries, it'll turn very hard, and it'll be too late to flatten it then. The builders have to make it as flat as they can while it's still wet and easy to move about. It takes a long time to pour all that concrete out. This foundation is going to be very big. A whole house is going to be built on it. The concrete pouring truck's empty now. No more concrete. It's finished pouring for the day. The builders can put away its pouring attachment and give it a clean. And here comes the next concrete pouring truck, ready to pour the next part of the foundation. This concrete pouring truck is finished for today. It's done a lot of good work. And here's the foundation, all finished. The concrete's dried and it's really hard. It's ready for a house to be built on it. Hmm, I wonder what all that wood's going to be used for. We'll find out later. Those foundations look really strong. That's stage one finished. Can you remember what stage two of building a house is? That's right, walls. That's stage two. This is another film about some of the walls we've built. We've built some out of bricks like this one. But we built this wall out of wood. We used great big logs and you stack them together to make a wall. These walls are made out of big metal panels. Some for the side walls and some for the front wall. And some for the upstairs. The panels fit together with these special clips. There's one part of a wall and another one and another one. And one more. Now here's a machine you need if you're building walls. He's very good at carrying things. He's big and he's strong and he's red. Right, it's Packer. Packer is my delivery truck. He's very useful if I'm building walls because he delivers all the important things I need, like wood and concrete. Look at that big heavy load. I couldn't carry all of that by myself. I need a big, strong machine to do it for me. But there's another machine who can be very useful for picking up and carrying smaller things. Do you know who it is? Right, it's Sumzy. She's my forklift truck. She can help load things up too, on Packer. You need a lot of things if you're building the walls of a house. You need a big, strong delivery machine. Let's go back on site and see what's being delivered there. This looks like a big, strong delivery truck, just like Packer, and it's delivering wood. You need wood for building walls, and this truck's delivering lots of it. This builder is untying the wood from the trailer. It had to be tied up while the truck was driving along so it didn't fall off. Time to deliver the wood. There it goes. One pile of wood delivered. Once all the wood they need has been delivered, these builders lay it out in the right place. Now they're ready to turn it into walls. So, those are the kinds of machines we need. Now it's time to see the walls being built. Let's go back on site. <laughs> Rock and roll! Remember all that wood that was delivered? Well, then the builders lay it all on the ground. They cut the pieces of wood so they're the right length. Then hammer them together. This special tool pushes nails in really quickly. But the builders use ordinary hammers too. The last pieces of wood are all being nailed together now. Mm -hmm. 
time to lift them up. There! That looks a bit more like a wall. It's the frame of a wall. A frame is the main shape of something. Remember, everything else gets built around it. of wood is called a brace. It's being nailed across the frames to make them really strong. There are two more braces being cut to length. And this metal bolt will make this frame strong too. There we are. All the wall frames all finished. Now, what happens next? Can you remember? Right! Concrete. The walls are sprayed with concrete to make them really strong and thick. That's what the builders are doing here. They're spraying concrete on. Can you see? Once the concrete's on the walls, they smooth it out so it's really flat. The builders use a special machine to spray on the concrete really fast. That way, they can spray the whole wall really quickly and then smooth it out. After the first layer of concrete's dried, the builders put another layer on top. This concrete's made with sand and it's very smooth. It's called render. And when you put it on, that's called rendering. People want their houses to be strong, but they also like them to look nice. That's why the special smooth rendering is put on, so the walls of the house look really neat and tidy. The builders are putting render all over the house, even on the chimney top. Can you see? Some bricks have been delivered too. There's a pile of them. When the rendering's finished, the builders use those bricks to make the columns look even nicer. And then they paint the columns too. There, those columns really do look great. Bob, they said that building walls is a bit like building a nest. They put lots of little bits of wood together, like twigs. And to make the walls of a house, you put lots of big bits of wood together. It sounds like the birds understood everything, Roly. But why don't I go through it with them one more time? Let's hit it! How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you build a house? If you want to see, sing along with me. Cos this is how you build a house. First you dig on down where your house will stand. You make a foundation, so dig them in the ground. Then fill them up with lots of concrete so your house will be strong like the others in the street. How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you build a house? If you want to see, sing along with me, cos this is how you build a house. Next you build the walls, you make them out of wood. Now the beams together so it looks really good. Now you've got your frame, it's time to have fun. Spray it on concrete, then the job. That was great, Roly. Now, do you remember the next stage of building a house? Building the roof. Here's a little film of me building roofs with my team. I'm putting some tiles on that roof. And here's Lofty helping me with the roof of a log cabin. This is my friend Marjorie. She's helping me build a thatched roof. That's a roof made out of twigs and branches called thatch. You have to build it really carefully so the twigs and branches will keep the rain out. This roof is made out of metal sheets. And this is a very special solar panel roof. It turns the sun into energy. And here's Lofty again, helping me build a roof out of tiles. He lifts them all the way up to me so I can put them on the roof. Loft is very good at lifting things. That's why he's very useful if I'm building a roof. Ah, 
Now here I am building a solar roof again. This special blue material is very clever. It turns sunlight into energy for the house. Here's Lofty again. He really is good at helping me build roofs. That's because roofs are built high up on top of a house. Whenever I build a roof, I make sure Lofty's with me. He's my brilliant roof building crane. Let's go on site and see some more cranes. Here we are back on site. Look at this crane. It's got a big hook, hasn't it? And look how high it's lifting it. I wonder what it's going to pick up with that hook. First, the builders need to make sure the crane will stay steady. So they fit these special extra feet. Now it's time to see what this crane's lifting. Look, it's a big wooden frame. The crane driver's making sure it's lifted into the right place. It looks like part of a roof. Here's another crane. This one's part of a truck. There's a special moving belt that runs all the way up it. It carries all these tiles up to the roof. Here's another crane. It's on its way to a job. And there it is, lifting all those tiles up onto that roof. Now it's off to help on another job site. So, a crane is the machine we need. Now it's time to see a roof being built. Let's go back on site. Here we are on site. This house is all ready to have its roof put on. And we know what kind of machine's going to come and help, don't we? Right, a crane. I wonder what job it's going to do first. It's lifting up this wooden frame, look! There it goes, into the air. I wonder where it's going to go. Those two builders are waiting for it. Oh, it's going on top of the walls. It's part of the roof. The builders hammer it into place. They're using that special tool again to put nails in. This builder's measuring some pieces of wood to make sure they're the right size. Let's watch all the builders put the roof together. for the other parts of the roof. Let's watch the crane lift them into place. There we are. The frame of the roof is all done. The frame of something is its main shape, remember? Here's another roof. The builders have covered the frame with pieces of wood, look. The pieces of wood are called panels. They're shiny on one side. That helps them keep the heat in the house when the roof's finished. The builders cut the panels so they fit the shapes of the roof. Everything has to fit together perfectly. When the panels are in the right place, the builders nail them down so they don't blow away. Once the panels are nailed on, the builders cover them with special material called roofing felt. It's very good at keeping the rain out, so the house underneath will stay nice and dry. But 
but the builders have to be very careful that no rain at all gets through the roof. So after they've laid the felt down, they put on these special tiles too. They cover the whole roof with them. It takes a long time. And when they've finished, there's still more to do because the last part of the roof is made out of these strong, heavy tiles. They'll keep the rain out for a very long time. The crane lifts them onto the roof. They cover the whole roof. There we are, a good strong roof. That'll keep the rain out. So, that's the roof done. I've got another little film here, though. Here's a film of some children who are going to build their own roof. What's this they're using? Can you tell? Oh, it's a big sheet. They're spreading it out on the ground. But you go under a roof. How can they lift it up? Clothes pegs? What are they for? I see. They're fixing the corners of the sheet onto things. So it's lifted off the ground. the children can go under it. And that makes it a roof. It's nice and cool inside because the roof makes shade from the sun. But where's she going? Oh, it looks like it's time for everyone to play. All under one roof. everybody. <laughs> and now all three stages are finished. Just a few little extra bits and pieces to go. Let's go back on site. The builders are going to start working on the inside of the house now. One of the first things they do is run lots of wires through the wall frames. The wires are very important because they'll carry electricity. And electricity will make the lights, the refrigerator, the television and everything else in the house work. But wires can look untidy, so the builders put them inside the walls where they can't be seen. What's this builder doing? He's cutting out a hole. I wonder what this is for. Do you know? Right! A window! And I wonder what this hole is for. Right! A door! The house is nearly finished now, but it needs painting. Some of the paint is sprayed on with a special machine. And some of it's painted on with a brush. Especially fiddly bits like that. They paint the outside too, with rollers. There we are. Just a last bit of painting to do, then it's all finished. We've seen one sort of house being built, Rolly, but it's not the only way to do it. There are lots of different kinds of houses and lots of different ways to build them, like Scarecrow Cottage. That was different, all right. Do you remember? I decided to build a house for Farmer Pickles out of straw. We built the foundations just the same as usual. I built the bottom part of the walls out of concrete and stone to make them really strong. But when that part was finished, 
I built the rest of the walls out of straw. Spud was very interested in the straw house because he's a scarecrow. He's made out of straw too. Once the straw walls were built, I put the roof on. And do you know what we cut out here? Can you guess? That's right, it's a door. Next, we had to make the building really strong, so we covered the straw with concrete. We put windows in and finished the roof. And when everything was done, Farmer Pickles made something else out of straw, a little straw doll. So we called it Scarecrow Cottage. And that isn't the only different sort of house I've built. What about Mr Bentley's office? I built that out of things you normally throw away, but I decided to turn them into a building instead. I used old tyres filled with earth to make the walls, and old tin cans too, and all sorts of other things. I even used pieces of old bamboo to make the pipes and gutters. We covered the walls with special plaster called adobe. And when Mr Bentley's office was finished, it was a very unusual building. Let's have a look at some other houses. There really are lots of different houses. These are all big family houses with lots of rooms, garages for cars and gardens to play in. This is a big family house too. These houses are spread out around a big lake. And these houses are much smaller. They're in the middle of a city where everyone lives much closer together. And these houses are very different. They've got curved roofs. All over the world, people live in all sorts of different houses. In the middle of the city, people even live in skyscrapers, really big, tall buildings. Rock and roll, Bob! There really are a lot of different kinds of houses, aren't there? Yes, Roly. And here's one more. Here's a film about some children who've been building a house. But where is it? Oh, it's a really small house. I wonder who's going to live there. Hmm. Someone who drinks from this bowl. Of course it's a dog! His name's Bugsy, and this is going to be his house. Wait a minute, something's wrong. What's that? Bugsy wants his house to be a different colour. Oh, I see, he wants it to be the same colour as his collar, red. The children are going to paint the dog house, so it's red, just like Bugsy's collar. They're moving the doghouse onto some paper so the floor doesn't get painted red as well. Here's the paint. They're wearing special painting clothes so it doesn't matter if they get a little bit of paint on themselves. First, they're pouring the paint into these special painting trays. And now, they're using brushes to paint the doghouse. They're using big brushes to paint the big parts. And small brushes to paint the small parts. There! All done! I think Bugsy likes his red house. But he can't go inside just yet. The paint's still wet. Bugsy needs to wait until it's dry. It takes a little while. But now it's dry. It's ready for Bugsy to go inside. Welcome to your new home, Bugsy. <laughs> well, Roly, we know all about building a house now. <laughs> But I think the little birds could do with another reminder. Yeah! Ready, birds? How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you build a house? 
If you want to sing, sing along with me. Cos this is how you build a house. For a good strong roof between walls and sky, you put it on the top and then you stay dry. You top it off with tiles, you lay them in a row, and your house is finished, and in you go. How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you build a house? If you want to sing, sing along with me. Cos this is how you build a house. There are lots of kinds, much more than one sort. Houses are built from more things than you thought. Some are built of tires, some are built of straw, but build them out of anything, just don't forget the door! Hang on, bub. This isn't a house. It's a playground. <coughs> Birds asking if people live in playgrounds, Bob. No, Roly. But wherever you live, it's nice to have fun things to do nearby at a place like a playground. <coughs> The birds want to know how you build playgrounds, Bub. I'll show you. My dad built the playground here by this tree for Sunny and Saffron and all the other children who live in Sunflower Valley. It was just like the one I used to play on when I was a little boy. First of all, Dad built a seesaw. He built it out of pieces of wood carefully put together. Sunny and Saffron loved it, once my dad had tested it out anyway. <laughs> Some squirrels had fun on a seesaw too. Then Dad built a climbing frame. He built that from wood too. There were ladders, like this one. And some rope netting, too. He built it right around the tree. And when it was finished, he helped Sonny and Saffron test it out, too. There was even a little bridge to walk over. Look! Last of all, Dad used an old rubble chute of mine to build a slide. A rubble chute is something you use to throw away bricks and concrete when you're demolishing a building. But you can turn it into a slide, too. A really good one. So good that my dad tested that out too. There are lots of different kinds of playground rolly, but they're all built in roughly the same way. Let's have a look. There were three stages to building a house, and there are three stages to building a playground too. Stage one, equipment. Stage two, surface. Stage three, fence. Can we build it? Yes, we, we can! can. Oh, hello, little truck. Have you come to help again? <laughs> Great! Now, let me think of something you can do. <laughs> I don't need to. <laughs> What's he up to? Hmm. I'm sure we'll find out soon. Now it's time for stage one. Equipment. That's what we call the slide, the swings, and everything else you play on at the playground. The slides and swings have to be fixed to the ground so they don't wobble about when we use them. They'll stand in these little holes, like this. But we need something extra, something strong and hard to hold them there. Concrete. Once the concrete dries hard, it'll hold the slide and swings in place. And stage one is finished. The equipment. It's time for stage two. Surface. The surface is what we call the ground in a playground. This surface is made out of wood chips. Small, squishy pieces of wood. If you fall on them, you'll have a soft landing. Now it's time for stage three. The fence. We put a fence around the playground so that everybody inside feels safe. And there it is. All done. Vroom, 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 vroom. Oh, hello, little truck. I'm afraid you're a bit late to help. The playground's all finished. We've done all three stages. Equipment, surface, fence. Vroom, vroom. There's something else? Vroom. I don't think so, little truck. Vroom. What's going on? Oh, I see. The children who are going to play in the playground. Of course. And you brought them here. You really did help, little truck. 
Well done! So, stage one, equipment. What machines do you think we'll need? Let's have another look at some of my machine team. We need a machine to deliver all the equipment, don't we? Who's this? Right, it's Packer. He's very good at picking up and delivering lots of heavy bits and pieces. He picks up important things from all over Sunflower Valley and takes them wherever they need to go. And when he's there, he picks up other important things and brings them back to the valley. He's perfect for delivering playground equipment. You need a digger too if you're building a playground to dig the holes for the slides and swings to stand in. Diggers like Scoop and Muck. Scoop and Muck are two of the best diggers there are. They'd be really useful when you're building a playground. They're good at digging all kinds of things. And it can be useful to have a cement mixer helping too if you're building a playground like Dizzy. She can mix up concrete for putting in the holes to hold the equipment in place really firmly. Dizzy really is a very good cement mixer. Look at the mixing and pouring she's done for me. And Dizzy knows a lot about concrete too. She knows you have to be careful not to touch it before it's dry. That's why she's crossing over it with this little bridge. Well done, Dizzy. Now, let's go back on site. Here's a playground all finished. Look at all the equipment. And look at the soft surface on the ground. And look at the fence all around it too, so it's really safe. Let's find out how all the equipment is made. Here it is in pieces at the factory. Those green and yellow pieces at the end are slides. And here's a builder, making the equipment. He's sawing the wood up into the right shape. He's drilling holes in it too, so it can be bolted together. Everything has to be just the right shape, so it fits together the right way. This part of the equipment has to be curved, so the builder's making it that shape with a special machine. And when all the bits of equipment are made, they have to be varnished. Varnish is a special paint which makes wood waterproof. When the wood's covered with it, it'll be protected from the rain and the weather. The varnish is dry now. Everything's ready. The builders are packing everything onto the back of a delivery truck. It's just like Packer, all packed up and ready to go. All the pieces of equipment are arriving at the place where the playground's going to be built. That yellow piece is the slide. The builders are putting up the first pieces of equipment now. Everything has to be bolted and screwed together really tightly. Lots of children are going to play on this equipment, so it has to be really strong. if there are playgrounds for birds. I've never heard of one, Roly, but there might be. Now, it's time for stage two. Can you remember what it is? Here's a clue. It's something special that goes on the ground to stop anyone hurting themselves if they fall. And it comes in these special bags. They're being delivered by another delivery truck. These builders are carrying them out to the playground. Do you know what's in the bags? It's lots of little pieces of wood called wood chips. Wood chips are soft. That's why the builders are putting them down around the playground equipment, so they make a soft surface. 
That's stage two of making a playground, putting down a soft surface. The builders need lots and lots of bags of wood chips. They've got to make sure everywhere around the playground equipment is covered, so the ground will be soft and the playground will be safe to use. Each bag is full of lots of wood chips. The builders make sure they're spread everywhere really deep. If you accidentally fell into them, it'd be like falling into a soft bed. You wouldn't hurt yourself. That's it. Make sure they go everywhere. There's plenty more. Stage two is nearly finished now. The builders just have to spread out the rest of those wood chips. They're using those big pegs to secure the frame that holds the wood chips in place. They need to make sure those pegs are hammered in good and strong. There we are. Just a few more wood chips to spread out so that everywhere's covered in a soft surface. This builder's using a special rake to do it. And the other builder's helping him with a spade. He's making sure the wood chips go absolutely everywhere. He wants to make sure this playground's really safe. The bags are all empty now. The wood chips have all been emptied out and spread around, and the soft surface is down. So, whoever uses the playground now will be really safe. What did you think of that, birdies? Birdies? They've gone. Oh. Oh, it's all right, Bob. I can hear them. They're over there. Good, because there's still one more stage to look at. Stage three. It happens after the equipment's put together and the soft surface has been put down. This builder's looking at his plans to find out what the last stage is. Here's a drawing of the playground he's building. The last stage that happened was putting up the fence. The builders put the fence around the playground to keep it really safe. The builders are finishing off a few other things too. They're bolting the slide on, and it's a special curved slide, look! This equipment is made out of metal, not wood. The builders are going to use concrete to hold the equipment in the ground really firmly. Here's the concrete being mixed. It goes into the hole, and when it dries, it goes hard. It will hold the equipment in the ground very firmly. And here's the last stage of the playground, the fence. The builders are putting it up bit by bit. The builders have finished now. They've used this digger to build the playground and they're taking it home. Let's watch them build it one more time. Let's have a look at another film. Here's a film of another playground. And here come some children to test it out. See these faces with a little smile? They mean something's quite good fun. But look at these faces. They've got a much bigger smile. That means something's really good fun. First test, the swings. They're quite good fun. But what's this? She's going higher and higher. And the higher she goes, the more fun it is. Swings were really good fun. Next test, the seesaw. Not much fun yet. That's because you need two people to have fun on a seesaw. Like this. Now she's showing the face with the big smile. Lots of fun this end. And lots of fun this end too. Last test, the slide. Oh, 
that looks like fun. And so does that. Hang on, everyone's having a go now. And when everyone has fun together, it's the best fun ever. Here are the birds, Bob. What are you doing, birdies? <laughs> Playing in your playground? Bouncing up and down on those branches does look like good fun. It's a bouncing birdie playground tree. Yes, there are lots of different kinds of playgrounds, Rolly. Once, I built a skate park in Boblin Bay. Here are the plans for it. A skate park is a place where people can play with their skateboards and rollerblades. It's got lots of exciting hills and dips for them to roll up and down. I needed a lot of concrete to build it. And that's why I asked Tumblr to join our team, because he's really good at pouring concrete. First of all, we had to measure out the site with these ropes and pegs. Then, Scoop and Muck had to do lots of digging. They dug out lots of holes and used the earth to make hills. Rolly came along and did some flattening too. And after that, Wendy and I built big, strong frames out of wood. Lofty lifted them into place. And we covered them with cloth and wire, ready for the next stage. You could really see the shape of all the slopes and dips now. Everyone was getting very excited, especially the skaters. But the park wasn't quite ready. We needed to make it really hard and smooth for the wheels and the skateboards. What do you think we used for that? Concrete! Tumblr poured it everywhere, and Dizzy helped him. They sprayed concrete all over the slopes and dips. When the concrete was dry, I painted the skate park, and it was ready to use. And Dizzy had the first go. She was brilliant! Let's have a look at another film, a film of another playground. Here are some children using another skate park. There are lots of tricks you can do on a skateboard, just look. You can skate up ramps and back down again. You can skate along rails. In fact, you can do whatever you want. Skate parks really are lots of fun. That was amazing, Bob. Bob? I don't know where he is, birdies. First you disappeared, now Bob's gone too. <laughs> What's that? Another song to remind us of everything while we wait for Bob to get back. How do you do it? How do you do it? How is the playground built? If you want to see, have a look with me. Cos here's how a playground's built. First, things to play on. Roundabouts and slides, a set of swings too and some other great rides. Lay a surface, make it nice and soft, so no one gets hurt if they slip and fall off. How do you do it? How do you do it? How is the playground built? If you want to see, have a look with me. Cos here's how a playground's built. To make it nice and safe, fence around it all with a gate to let in children big and small. Then you've built a playground full of things to do. Fun for everybody from Bob the Builders Crow! Big it up now! Bob! There you are! Yes! And look what I found in my workshop! It's a birdhouse! Thanks, Scoop! Thanks, Dizzy! No prop, Bob! Right, Bob! That's amazing, birdies! You found out about houses and playgrounds today! And now you've got your own special birdie house and birdie playground too! Right! Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>